o'clock here local time. So we're going to go ahead and get started with everything today. So um, for those of you that um, are returning, thank you and welcome back. And those of you that are brand new to our Maker Maven webinar series, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, so I would love to introduce myself. Um, my name is Matt Garcia. I am co-owner of Maker Maven, along with my wife, Jamie. Uh, we started Maker Maven back in April of 2016 um, and able to really help our educators uh, learn how to use Maker and STEM education, not only in their classrooms, but in their li uh, libraries, whether it be Maker Spaces, STEM Labs, um, or any way to tie in hands-off collaborative learning uh, with your students to reinforce your lessons, or maybe you were doing a true maker space and have an open collaboration, open invention and thought. Uh, I also would like to introduce Brianna Kua. Brianna is all, our Director of Marketing and Brand Communications for Maker Maven. So if you're familiar with us, um, if you see our social media posts, our great newsletters, our STEM challenges that are put out bi-monthly or bi-weekly every month, um, that's all Bree. So she is busy, busy behind the scenes most of the time. So I'm so happy she's here to help us on these webinars. She's gonna be helping us moderate through today. So please don't hesitate to use the chat. We're gonna be talking a lot today and trying to get a good back and forth between um, all of us panelists and all of the attendees as well. All right, so I just wanna go over a few quick housekeeping rules for the webinar. So again, we're really going to encourage you to use the chat as much as possible throughout the entire presentation. So if you see something cool, let us know. If you see something you're already doing, let us know. If you have questions, um, just simple questions that can be answered on the spot, uh, go ahead and pop them in the chat. If you have any questions that you think might be a little bit more in depth or take a little bit more thought and time to explain, Go ahead and use the Q&A section that you should find at the bottom of your screen and type those in and we'll respond to all of your questions after the main part of the presentation. Um, so again, don't be shy, ask your questions, let us know what you think. We're also going to be doing a great giveaway for a lucky winner today for all of our live attendees. And the way you register for that, um, you got to tag us and three ducks on either Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. So we want you not only active in the chat, we want you active in social media. Take screenshots, um, share the session um, on your social media channels. So we're gonna be taking names, putting them in a random number or name generator in this case, to select the winner for anybody that has those um, interactions with us on social media. Remember, you have to tag at maker underscore maven and then at three ducks design, I believe it is. We'll find out here on the next page. So uh, without further ado, I would love to introduce our guest for today. So uh, we have Marcy Klein. She's the co-founder and PBL program developer um, for three ducks design. Um, and again, that Twitter handle is at three ducks design. So make sure you tag us and three ducks. So thank you so much for joining us, Marcy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. So. Um, everybody can learn a little bit more about three ducks and what we can do with it today. Sounds great. Thank you. So let's see, I'm going to go over to my screen share. And hi, everybody. And thank you uh, for joining. Um, so I'll ask the co host, can you guys see my screen right now? Awesome. Yes, so I'm going to start from the slide. Um, so hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, as Matt introduced, my name is Marcy Klein, and I am one of the co-founders of 3 Ducks Design. Um, our company is a social enterprise, and our mission is to create engaging and authentic learning experiences for kids globally. Um, so um, you might have noticed on my intro, there's an MD. I actually spent the first 20 years of my career as a pediatrician. And it was actually my children who started our company that inspired me to make the transition into education. Um, so here you can actually have an opportunity to meet the original 3 Ducks makers. Um, as you might appreciate if you have kids, um, our kids were makers from the day they were born. Um, we in our house were not allowed to throw out cardboard. That was considered a sin. Every cardboard um, box in our house was magically transformed into something um, 
dollhouses, um, parking garages, pulleys, elevators, you name it, the kids used it. Um, and that was actually part of the inspiration for Three Dots. Um, years ahead, um, the little girl up there who's wearing the I'm going to grow up and be an entrepreneur shirt. Um, that was her first day of kindergarten. Um, when she was in high school, she took an architecture class one summer and she came home so inspired by architecture. Um, she was an artist at heart. And what she discovered that art was that architecture actually takes the arts and it takes humanity and it takes nature and the environment and it blends it with math and geometry and engineering concepts to create structures for the human existence. And she thought that that was an amazing opportunity that through the arts, she could actually learn STEM subjects. And then she came home and wondered why kids at elementary school level don't use architecture as a way to engage them in STEM learning. Um, lucky at the same time, my son was really into 3D printing and um, together they came up with the Three Ducks design modeling system. Um, so what is the Three Ducks design modeling system? It is actually a set of six different shaped connectors that are designed to fit all single ply cardboard. And actually, mine is hidden, but um, you can see that there are six different geometric shaped card um, connectors that range from acute angles, obtuse angles, right angles, and 180 degree angles. And with these connectors, children can pretty much use any cardboard to create incredibly complex structures without the use of any duct tape or any glue. Um, sorry. Um, so the other part of our product is the cardboard. Um, now, we actually offer a huge range of different geometric shapes of cardboard from circle squares, rectangles, trapezoids, um, in all different sizes that are white on one side that are matte. And the beauty of this is that children really young can create incredibly complicated three-dimensional structures. Uh, this little boy on the right is actually three years old at the time. Um, and the other beautiful thing about having the cardboard pre-cut is that um, they can actually color it, paint it, decorate it to make the structures that they design um, really come to life. Um, now I also mentioned that the connectors are de designed to fit all cardboard. Um, so here is an example of a class from Renton, Washington, and they opted to use only our connectors and um, started a whole school-wide recycling um, event to get the cardboard for their, um, I think on the right is their landmark activity, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but their idea was to use only recycled cardboard that they had in their community to build. Um, so that's an, an example of a project that's done with purely recycled materials. Um, the other beautiful thing about fitting on all cardboard is that we have the ability to send connectors anywhere around the world at a very low cost and let the end user, wherever they are, in this case, they were in Benin, Africa, um, use their own local cardboard to create structures that represent their community. So 3 Ducks has a real global vision to really be able to get kids learning STEM everywhere around the world with a very low barrier to entry. Um, in addition to the product, we also have a wide range of lesson plans and activities. They're all um, project-based learning, obviously. Um, we have very basic, simple design challenges that could be used in centers or for free play, all the way up through our um, full-blown curriculum, which is architecture and urban planning, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, all of our lessons, whether they're the really simple ones or the more complicated curriculum, are um, focused on the design thinking process. Um, so we have students go through multiple iterations of this process before um, they have their final product. 
Um, so students will go out into the community and research a problem. They will ideate and come up with some design options. They'll prototype and create, um, and then they'll share and get feedback and start the process over again until they're happy with their project and then create a final presentation if, um, if that's what they plan to do. Um, in the process, students are learning a ton of different types of um, concepts. So between the STEM subjects like um, geometry, um, critical problem solving, 3D spatial thinking, to the more 21st century skills like creativity and communication and collaboration. Um, most of our lessons have um, a pretty strong language arts component to them as well, whether it be um, a story that we write or we reference a book that goes along with a project. Um, and then there's always um, storytelling and sharing ideation um, and the final project with a presentation along the way. So we really try to create um, learning environments that really break down the silos of social studies, English, math, and science. It's really all put together in one, one curriculum. Um, so to access the lesson plans, um, Matt and I have been talking about good ways to um, let all the Maker Maven um, buyers access the lesson plans as well. Um, so I believe that you, if you can't already download the lessons on Maker Maven, you should soon. Um, but if not, um, all you have to do is let Matt know that you're interested in the lesson plans and between Matt and myself, we'll be able to get you access to all the lessons. Um, just for reference on our website, when you do access the lessons, you would have an access pass and you would go um, to the drop down for school and then look at the lesson plans and more. And that's where you would access all of the um, all the learning contents. Um, here's an example of one of our um, more open ended. Um, this would be like a centers type of design challenge. So this particular challenge is the Crossing River Challenge. Um, and as, as with most of our lessons, there's usually a host um, design challenge person um, who helps us create that challenge. And this particular challenge was uh, co-designed by an aeronautic engineer in Hamburg, Germany, who we found on LinkedIn that loved our projects and wanted to do a challenge. Um, so her challenge was that she lives on one side of the Elbe River and her work is on the other side and has students designing a bridge to help her get to work. Um, so in the process of learning about Germany and the Elbe River, they're also using their engineering skills to build a bridge. In this case, I think it's for uh, some dinosaurs. Um, another example of a quicker and more um, simple design challenge would be our Mars Windstorm channel Challenge. Um, and this talks about atmosphere on Mars, atmosphere on the Earth and the difference. And then they talk about if there were to be a windstorm on Mars, um, how would they make sure that their habitats um, did not get blown over? So there's a lot of structural engineering in here. And this particular lesson, you can use a fan or a blow dryer to test out the student's projects. Um, so there is a component of friction in the lesson as well. Um, so some of the standards based lessons that we have, um, one of the favorites for all age groups is our tiny house challenge. Um, so the tiny house challenge um, goes through first starting out what is a tiny house um, and why would we want to build a tiny house. What are some of the benefits of the tiny house and what would be some challenges of living in a really small habitat. Um, we do have this uh, project is associated with a book. So teachers can either read the book um, or there is actually a link in the lesson plan to a YouTube read aloud. So if you don't have access to the books, the student can still enjoy that. Um, when they're done with that project, they're challenged. This particular challenge, they have to design a tiny home with 150 square feet. And um, it's designed for a family of two parents with one child and a dog. So they have to account for everyone living in the home and how they would live in such a small space. Um, for the third to fifth graders, you can add geometry in there. So the kids actually have to calculate 
the surface area, perimeter, and volume of their home. Um, and they also have to calculate the cost that it would take to build the home. So they have to learn all the surface area of the roof, um, interior walls, exterior walls. Um, so it can get pretty um, heavy in math if you wanna take it there. Like all of our projects, um, there's always an opportunity for presentation at the end. Um, so this young lady was one of 100 fifth grade students in Bridgeport, Connecticut, who did our tiny house challenge over the course of a six week program. And this school had never um, actually had a STEM night before. So their first STEM night where they invited all the parents was to see their tiny house challenge um, presentations. So all the students created um, a trifold board with um, all their calculations. And in their um, example, they went over why each house was considered sustainable. So they built in our sustainability challenge with that. Um, here is another school. This one is in Renton, Washington, and they did our Busy Bee Challenge and Pollinator Pathway Challenge. Um, and this is an example of how you can um, use uh, cross-curricular content. So in this particular project, they did a lot of life sciences and learned about the natural bees life cycle and the native plants in their community. Um, and then they designed and built a pollinator pathway um, in their city to support bees life. Um, and this group actually had bee bots, which are little robots. Um, so they actually storyboarded out um, a sample of how a bee would use their pollinator pathway with calculating robots. Um, so those are just a few examples of some of the lessons that we have. Um, a lot of the lessons on our website are free and open. If they have a star, that means that you can access them even if you don't have our materials. Um, and some of our lesson plans, I don't know if you can see to the top right, have this um, little logo. Those are actually a part of a bigger curriculum, which is called our Global Futures um, Design Lab, which I can tell you a little bit more about as well. I don't know, Matt, did you want me to stop along the way if there are questions? Because I tend to talk forever. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, I, a lot of people are excited in the chat, but I haven't seen any questions pop up. So Great. you're good Great. to rock and roll. Sounds good. Um, so I'll take some time to go over our bigger curriculum, which is the Global Futures Design Lab. Um, and this is a student-centered project-based learning program where students really have an opportunity to take a really deep dive into the design thinking process as they design and build a model um, for solutions to real world problems. Um, so the Global Futures Design Lab has two components to it. There's the core curriculum, um, and then there are also side quests, which are really like mo op optional modules and extensions to the core program. Um, so in the core curriculum, students learn about community as they are challenged to design a community center based on the local needs and the culture in their own town. Um, so the center can be based in their own town or it can also um, be chosen based on student interest or a teacher can opt to tie it to some of the lessons that they're learning possibly in another class. So if they're learning ancient Egypt, they can easily transplant the location to Egypt instead of their own community. Um, um, so here's an example of a class from St. Louis that did our Global Futures Design Lab. Um, in this case, they, they actually had a physical empty space in the, the area called East End, and that was where they used to develop their community center. Um, so the class actually went out and did a site visit of the location. Um, they took an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the community and their community needs their culture in their local community. And then they went back and they brainstormed what would they want for a community center in this, in this area. Um, they did a Google search and they looked up some um, idea boards of other you know, site maps from other communities. And then they went and they drew out and they actually laid out with um, construction paper how they would start to think about laying out their community center. 
Then they broke up into groups. Each team or each individual student was assigned a particular part of that community center to design and build. And um, then they came back at the end to um, work together to kind of put it all together in one big urban planning design. Um, so that is an example of the core curriculum that will typically take between eight to 15 hours, depending on the class and how deep they want to go into their research and um, how many iterations they want to do. Um, and also depending on how much um, preparation they're going to do for their presentation. The group in St. Louis actually had an opportunity to present it to the urban planning community development. Um, so they took a lot of time to create their presentation. Um, now I also mentioned that there are side quests and the side quests can be done actually as individual lessons, um, but they're much more um, authentic if they're used with the Global Futures Design Lab curriculum. Um, and there are a range of different lesson plans as well, um, very cross-curricular. So there are um, business model ones where you're actually learning financial literacy to design a landmark to um, pure geometry, friction, engineering concepts. So there's a wide range of options. Um, here is an example of one of our side quests. Um, so it's the National Landmark Side Quest. And in this activity, um, students start out by um, learning what it is to have a landmark, what is a landmark? Um, and then they do a study of certain landmarks in either their own community or in their country. Um, and then after they gather some research, they have an opportunity to design and build a landmark in their town. Um, the lesson plans typically come with a teacher's, um, a facilitator guide, and most of them come with student, um, student guides as well. So you can print out worksheets and the students can work with those. Um, here's one that's a little bit more engineering based. Um, so this one is fun with friction at the Three Ducks Winter Park. And in this activity, um, you can make um, a, a hill or a slope. Um, the idea is that they make a sled and a slope and they're gonna test the speed of the sled down the slope using different fabrics and materials to represent um, different weather patterns, which would probably be a really good activity for this week, um, given, <laughs> given your snow over where you guys are in Texas. Uh, but you can use different materials from plastic, which might represent ice, to um, felt, which might represent glass. Um, we had a good time with bubble wrap, and we even compared the bubble wrap on the top side and the bottom side to determine um, you know, the different forces involved and the friction. Um, you also have an opportunity to add your presentations on our uh, student showcase page. So students can, um, if they can take photographs of their project and they write, have a good write up and they can also create um, a video presentation, they have an opportunity to submit their project um, to our Global Futures Design Lab showcase and um, show their projects to the world. Um, you can actually see a ton of different projects from kids all around the world there and students can enjoy them and learn about other cultures while they see other kids projects. Hey Marcy, you mind if I interrupt? Uh, I got a few, I got a question that keeps popping up in the chat here. Yeah. Um, so uh, Tammy and Hillary are wondering, um, are there going to be opportunities for moving parts besides robots for your kids in the future? Yeah, so we, well, we are in talks with, we're not gonna be making our own moving parts because our feeling is that there are so many awesome companies that already do that, um, that play really well with 3 products. products. Um, so we actually do have LED lighting kits so you can learn electricity and circuits. Um, but what we do um, often do is have projects that you can use other materials that you already have with moving parts. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly 
I should go back to the Maker Maven website and see which moving parts you have. <laughs> um, but I am sure that Matt and Jamie can help you um, integrate our cardboard with um, other micro bit um, type products that would allow you to make smart homes, um, open doors, um, put light sensors on, um, and lots of any, any technology that you already have in the classroom, I can pretty much guarantee will work really nicely with 3 ducks because we're just the architecture for all of those other products. Um, but I do know that a lot of classrooms make moving parts out of our houses and buildings. Were there other questions about that, Matt? Um, see, another one just popped in. Oh, I missed it. Where did it go? Um, is it possible to create hinges as a connector? I am thinking of creating doors as an example, and that comes from Linda Rins Ryan. Yeah, so we have thought about adding a hinge connector, um, and we have a design for it. Um, the challenge is making new parts and being a young company and um, the expense of an injection mold. That said, um, whoever it was that reached out to me, um, I've been playing around with little hinges that you can actually get like at Home Depot in a craft store. And there are hinges that I found that work really nicely. And you can actually buy like 200 of them on Amazon for like $5. Um, so whoever that was, you can definitely um, email me or email Matt and I can give you the link to those hinges and you'll have hinges for any student that wants them for years to come. Okay, perfect. Um, I think that's good. I have a few questions I earmarked that we'll, uh, that we'll ask at the Q&A sections. Okay, great. Right. Um, yeah, so this is just an example of um, a student showcase webpage. Um, and these were actually kindergarteners. Um, so what they did was they wanted to share a little bit about their own culture. So some of their webpage is based on the local Costa Rican animals, um, their nature and their culture. And then over to the right, you can see the community that the kindergartners built. Um, it's really actually quite adorable because they gave us close up enough photos that you can actually read the houses in Spanish. So your students, if they're learning Spanish, can practice and try to figure out what houses and buildings they built by looking at the names on the structures, which is just a really fun part of what the Student Showcase is all about. Um, I do have a video. I don't know, Matt, do you think we should try it or are we running low on time? Should we just add a link? Um, we're good on time. I think you're good to go ahead and play it. Okay, great. So this is an example of one um, classroom in Bridgeport, Connecticut, that decided to create a video of their project. And it's about two or three minutes. Let me see if I can start it. And just, Rad, if you give me a thumbs up if it's working on your ends, then I'll know I can let it keep going. Great. Looking at an aerial view of the site, Steel Point Harbor is a waterfront property with an adjacent uninhabited island. It is close to the Bridgeport Ferry, University of Bridgeport, a Bass Pro Shop, a Starbucks, and a Chipotle. It is also right near this awesome new education company called Three Ducks Design. Before building our model, we created a site map with paper and post-its to lay out the space and buildings. We divided it into focused teams, each responsible for a different aspect of the job. Our teams included economic growth, education, recreation, cultural diversity and equity, and the environment. This is our design. Starting with the island, we designed it as a zero waste recreation area with a hotel, a farm to table restaurant, an ice cream shop, and a lighthouse museum. The entire island is designed to bring visitors and money to the community. It is 100% owned and run by the people of Bridgeport, supplying new jobs. Our team opted for the sustainable feature side quest and learned how to run the island entirely on wind and solar power. To celebrate cultural diversity, we designed a live performance and recreation center where locals could share their music, their culture, and have fun entertaining visitors. We believe that understanding and celebrating what makes us unique will foster a better sense of community and equity for the next generation. No 
Stage is complete without multicolored LED lighting and super modern seating, of course. The next part of our development is the before and after school center, perfect for working parents. It has a maker space, a gymnasium, and a greenhouse where kids learn gardening and grow the food that supplies the Seaview Hotel with farm fresh produce. The adjacent community forest includes a pond with a water feature, a swing set made from upcycled materials, and a meadow with a treehouse, home to wild animals and the cows that supply the island ice cream shop with fresh ingredients. Next is the Adult Education Center. Many people in this community do not complete high school or college, so this is a perfect place for them to learn new skills. It has a library, an outdoor cafe, and an entrepreneurship innovation lab. There is a small business counseling service. Adults can broaden their skill set to join the workforce, get counseling on starting a business, and use the Innovation Lab to design and prototype their new ideas. The adjacent startup alley is a line of pop-up shops that entrepreneurs can rent by the month to market test their startup ideas with real customers at low risk. This beautiful seaside oasis is designed to give locals a place to enjoy, to learn, to socialize, to work, and most of all, to take pride in their city. With a flourishing visitor center and influx of money to the city, this can be just the beginning. Thank you for listening, and we hope you like our proposal. If accepted, we would be happy to break ground today. Okay, hopefully I'll be able to get out of that slide. Let's see. Okay, great. Yeah, so that was an example of a sixth grade class that did a presentation. Um, so you can kind of appreciate how technology can integrate with our very low tech product. Those students um, used one of our actually movie making design challenges to learn how to do different video techniques and photography techniques. Um, and they learned how to do, um, you know, create a, a video. I'm not sure exactly what platform they use, but it's a great way to integrate other technology into our product through the presentations. Um, just for going over some of our products that you can get through Maker Maven, um, most classrooms get the top left corner, which is our GoBox classroom. It's designed for 25 to um, 30 students working in groups of three together. And that kit comes with what you see below it is called the cardboard refills. It actually comes with enough cardboard to get you through the entire year. Um, we are a pretty young company. We're three years old and COVID is a little odd this year. So, um, but in general, it seems like um, some classes are buying more cardboard the second year, but they're really not needing any more connectors the second year. So it seems like they're doing well with the connectors year over year. Um, we do have a GoBox Pro LED lighting kit. Um, so we very often recommend that for third grade, it has um, battery holders, the electrical conductor, alligator clips, it has um, maker tape and 40 LED lights. So each group of students, up to four students can do a parallel, a series and a simple circuit. And they come with little puppies because of course, what fun is it to make a city if you don't have any inhabitants in it? The kids love the little dogs. Um, our newest kit are these individualized maker kits, which is one of the things, the thing that we're going to be um, raffling off later today. Um, those were originally designed for COVID um, so that students at home have some extra materials that they may not have at home that you would typically have in the classroom, like string, straws, pom-poms. Um, of course, again, the little dog and a couple other, oh, um, metal fasteners for making linkages and levers. Um, so those kits um, are great for kids that are back and forth. So if your kids are still at home or in a hybrid environment, the backpacks are great because they all have their own material in their own backpack. They're actually plastic, um, so they can be sprayed and kept clean with a uh, fantastic or disinfectant. And they're also great for after school programs, um, summer camps where kids want to keep their projects at the end. Um, so yeah, that I believe, yeah, is my presentation. And thank you for joining me and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you, Marcy, thank you so much. Um, so. 
I got a couple of questions. Um, so Jerry Campbell asked, um, or actually stated that um, she's interested in shorter lesson plans. Uh, they have four day long camps. Some are full day, some are half day. Mm -hmm. So um, do, you do you have any shorter lesson plans for that type of time frame? Yeah, so we actually, because we, we do a lot of enrichment programs, uh, work with uh, enrichment programs, and a lot of them do um, birthday parties. So we have lesson plans that actually fit into an hour and a half birthday party. So we have for um, the tiny home, first of all, if you don't add the geometry and the engineering and all of the true academics, every kid likes to make a tiny home and you could easily make a tiny home. I've done them in an hour. Um, we have a really great zoo challenge where they're designing a different zoo enclosure with every animal. And there are, I think, five different animals with five different simple engineering activities. So you can break that up. So different students do different animals if you only have one hour. Um, but a lot of camp programs do a different animal every day, which fills up pretty much the whole week. Those are just a few. We have a ton of different one hour ones though. Very good. Um, all right. So from Linda Renz Ryan, did you ever think of pasting QR codes on their designs? The codes can lead to tech that show more of their ideas. Um, we, um, well, actually, well, we are thinking of using QR codes, but possibly for something a little different. Um, explain again to me, Matt, uh, what the question, what we would do with those QR codes. Um, I'm not sure. It looks like in the chat that they were just linking to um, different ideas for the students. Um, maybe some um, alterations to a lesson or something like that. Uh, it, it was a lot got lost in the chat. We've been very active. So I'm trying to okay. go through and find it now, but. Um, yeah, so we, we do have QR codes that link to specific activities in some of our projects and kits. Um, yeah, I think I'd have to understand a little better exactly what the QR codes would be doing so I could answer it better. Um, but we do think that we might be integrating in some way with virtual and augmented reality through QR codes in the future. So um, don't hold your breath, um, but that will hopefully be happening in the not so distant future. Perfect. Um, I got a few people asking, um, this is more for me, I think, um, asking if this will be recorded. Yes, this session is being recorded. So tomorrow morning, you will all receive an email um, thanking you for attending, and you will also receive a link for the recording of the session as well. And let's see who else we have. Um, Linda, also again, asking, what do you recommend for a K-5 elementary library? Um, so one kit, and again, COVID makes it challenging. Um, if there's no sharing, um, you know, you probably one, one classroom kit. Let me go back. So one classroom kit is typically designed for 25 students working at one time. Um, and they would be working in groups of two to three. So typically, you know, probably about three students at it, like, in each group. If you're gonna have one student working with their own materials, I would say one go box kit would be like 14 students getting enough material to work independently. Um, or you could do one go pack per student. Um, the cardboard, of course, with COVID would be a little bit more challenging to clean. The connectors are plastic. You could put them in a strainer and wash them and then reuse them the next day. That wouldn't be a problem. Um, for normal times, um, usually if it's K through five and different groups are coming in and breaking down, like you're doing a one hour project where they can take it apart, you could probably get away with three go boxes for the entire school. Um, if they're going to be doing a project and you're going to be doing like an eight week project and they're going to be keeping it up, then it would be like one per classroom. So if you're doing like a project with the entire fifth grade and there are four classes, then you'd probably want four, four kits. 
that said, I, you would want a pretty big library because the kids like to um, make a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, so I just have a couple, two more questions popping in. If anybody else has any questions, go ahead and throw it in the chat right away. Um, so I've got a question from Victoria and also Claudette. So I'll kind of combine their two questions into one. So one, um, do the kits come with instruction manuals and are any of the connectors available in clear color or so non-color basically? Yeah, so we, um, we do have clear. Um, we made a batch of clear with the idea of kind of pushing into middle school and high school. And what we discovered was that they like the colored connectors too. <laughs> so when we did a little experiment and put them all together, nobody was picking the clear. We do have clear. Um, they are a little bit more flexible than the colored ones. So we don't typically sell them because with the littler children, they're a little bit more fragile, I would say. They'll, there's, there's definitely still good and usable, but you, you know, I was just a little concerned as a new company that in two years we would get them back, that they were deformed. That said, whoever it was that asked if they want some, I'm happy to send them some and they can try them out if they're willing to give me some feedback on what they think about them. Um, and there was a second half to that question or no? Um, if the kits come with instruction manuals. Oh, yes. So we specifically say that there are no instructions. Um, so, well, that said, the GoBox Pro with the LED lighting does have instructions for the electricity and the circuits. Um, but because all of our shapes and all of our projects are designed to not force children to be right or wrong by default, like as a conscious effort to not um, have judging of projects. We don't really have specific instructions. The lesson plans, however, are basically instructions, their curriculum, um, but they're still very open-ended. So we don't tell people how to build their tiny house. They just have constraints. Um, so it has to be in a certain square footage or it might have to be only a certain cost um, before, you know, for the final structure. Um, but very specific instructions like put this circle here. We, that's not part of our philosophy. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Victoria says, thank you for answering. So, okay. all right. Any, any other questions from um, any of the attendees today? All right, Linda has another question here. How long does the cardboard last with a lot of student handling? Yeah, so for the most part, um, schools would, I would say half of the schools that bought the Go Box Classroom did get refills the following year. A lot of our products are used in the library. So they're used with lots of students over and over again. Um, I've done hundreds of hours of classroom time and um, actually farmer's markets. We have a whole retail line as well. Um, so we do a lot of farmer's markets where we set up a booth and play with kids. And I can tell you, I have cardboard from a Halloween and kids at farmer's markets are not gentle or fragile. And like the following year, we'll pull out the Halloween, you know, the one, the pieces with the ghosts on them and kids use them again. So they last a really long time. As a piece starts getting a little floppy, you can also cut it and then you can make new shapes out of it. Um, and then I also recommend um, just as part of a fun activity that when you buy it, send every kid home with one job to bring in three cardboard recycled shapes from home. Number one, it doubles the amount of product that you have, but it also shows the kids that you can use recycled materials and it allows them to make unique shapes that they might not wanna make by cutting up the pieces that you have. We also try to keep the refills pretty cost effective so you can buy more if you need it. And it uh, looks like Jennifer has a question. Um, she's wondering, if you could laminate the pieces and then kids could decorate with dry erase markers and make them last longer. Do you think yes, that? you can. We actually have used vinyl. Um, well, we have a die cutter. That's how we cut our shape. So we have the unique benefit of making like 
perfect shapes <laughs> at a vinyl, um, but you can actually um, cover it with um, clear material. You could even use on some of the smaller pieces, um, you know, just clear plastic, um, you know, clear tape, like scotch tape um, and color on that. So you could definitely get more longevity out of it that way. Um, but to be honest, a lot of kids love finding um, a treasure piece that's pre-colored. So again, at events like one kid would make a birthday cake and there would be a little cardboard that said, happy birthday, Claire. And like we'd go to a new farmer's market and somebody would pull out this happy birthday, Claire. And that would actually be the ins inspiration for like a whole new project. And the kid had no idea who Claire was or how old Claire even was. But they love finding like a little tidbit or a little hint of some prior use and creating a whole new project out of it. So don't be afraid to let them color the cardboard. Oh, actually, I'll say one more thing. Um, the other thing that you can do is get like at Michael's, you can get printed paper. So you can get paper that looks like grass and paper that looks like brick or stone. And you can actually cut it out. You could use like, um, use our shapes as a stencil um, and then cut it out. And then you don't even have to glue the paper. You can actually use the connector and you just put the paper in with the connector and it'll create like a removable wall, essentially. All right, perfect. Um, looks like we had some people asking about pricing questions here, about how much a go box costs. And then also, do the connectors work on thin cardboard like cereal boxes or paper towel rolls? And um, they're a little thin for that. What you can do, let me see if I have a little guy over here, um, here. So if you have thinner cardboard, you can actually like, this is actually what I was describing before with covering. So this is, this was like from Groundhog Day activity. So we just covered um, the cardboard and then we put the connector on it. If you have um, really thin cardboard, like, um, like a cereal box, you can actually double up on it. Um, and if you have cardboard that's somewhat in between, just putting a piece of paper over it is very often enough to make it thick enough um, to fit the connectors. The, thin, the connectors have a little bit of flexibility and they have rounded corners. So slightly thicker cardboard can kind of ease in. Um, if your cardboard is too thick, which is unlikely for you to be able to cut double ply cardboard, but if you can and you wanna use it, I usually just put finger over finger and just pinch and it compresses the corrugation in that one area and then the connectors fit really nicely. Hey, Marcy, I'm getting a few people in the chat um, asking if you can stop your screen share. They're having a hard time seeing, um, oh, yeah. seeing your video. Yeah, I'm kind of small. Sure. There you go. <laughs> all righty. Perfect. And all right. Do we have any other questions? So um, Anne was saying she didn't have a lot of money. So there are, and I see somebody else in the chat had already um, mentioned it, but there are tons and tons of STEM grants out there. Um, more than more grants are available than people are writing for them right now. So uh, just finding those grants can be a little difficult. Maybe some of you other educators in the chat can direct Anne um, to where you find your grants. Um, I know there's a lot of federal grants. There's some businesses that specialize in, um, in STEM grants. I know a lot of the energy companies, whether it be wind, solar, uh, fossil fuels, a lot of them offer STEM grants as well. So look into some of them larger corporations that will uh, be able to help you get funding. Yeah, and the nice thing about our curriculum is so it's, it's so open-ended and so, um, so um, multi-dimensional that we've actually gotten approved for some of the schools in Texas for um, career training. Um, materials. So you can kind of, you can use our product, like we have standard alignment for language arts, for math, and for STEM. So depending on what grants are available, you could always tweak your grants and we'll have a lesson plan that fits with it. I think somebody wanted to see the groundhog again. Yes. So that's our groundhog. <laughs> um, so these three ways, by the way, um, make really great feet. So little characters can stand um, and a really great little trick for children that can't cut cardboard is let them cut the paper 
Um, and then you can just use like a little tiny wedge. Either you can use one of our full pieces. Actually, this is not even a full piece or just a little tiny piece of cardboard at the bottom. And that will make the, like the kindergartners can make hundreds of characters to populate their city, which kindergartners love to do. They love making little characters. We do have a lesson plan for Groundhog Day, by the way, with um, shadows and light, which I can share later. All right, I don't see much else coming in for questions. All right, let's see. Yep, so a lot of activity in the chat today. Uh, people seem super excited. So thank you everybody for uh, jumping in there and telling us what you think and how you're already using three ducks or how you would use three ducks. So that's awesome. Um, see, Carol's asking, could you paste the link to the video you showed? And I believe, um, I believe Brianna has that link. Mm -hmm. um, and we can uh, definitely paste that in the chat for you. Yeah, that class actually did a whole web page too. So they have a whole written content, they have photography um, and uh, video example. Um, oh, perfect. there you go. Yeah, that's yep. Brianna. All right, perfect. And there's that link. So uh, we do have a winner as well. So from our social media mentions. So uh, let me go ahead and find that again, because man, everybody in the chat here has just buried everything today, which is awesome. Thank you, everybody. So looks like our winner today. So all of the, the names and everybody that interacted on social media, thank you so much um, for joining and showing your support. Um, so all of the names were put into a random generator. And the lucky winner chosen today is uh, Jocelyn Bodecker. So I apologize if I butchered your name. I am really good at that, but congratulations. Um, you are our winner today. So I'm gonna go ahead and send you a message right now with my email address. And once you send me your shipping information, um, I will get that over to Marcy and we can get your prize out as soon as possible. As soon as I get shoveled out of our driveway, hopefully by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. So good job, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, and... Thank you for joining everyone. It was fun to share. Yeah, definitely. So, and, and thank you, Marcy. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a, an absolutely fantastic session. You got a lot of educators excited. The chat is still absolutely blowing up right now. So um, I can't thank you enough for uh, coming on and spending the afternoon with us. So well, it was a pleasure to be here. <laughs> thank you. Yep, you're, you're welcome. All right. So, uh, and again, thank you everybody for joining us. Everybody that took the time out of your afternoon to join us on our webinar today, learn a bit, a uh, little bit more about three ducks. So there's three things I kind of want to go over again, really quick that uh, we learned during Marcy's presentation again. So uh, simple, open-minded or open-ended low-tech materials offer more room for creativity and critical problem solving. Also, 3Ducks Design offers a wide range of highly engaging design challenges that allow for more independent, hands-on work at home. And individualized travel packs keep students' materials separate for safety and come in a backpack for seamless transition from live to remote. So uh, those are three good things to remember and take away from today's presentation. Um, so... Again, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for joining these webinars. Um, you know, we couldn't keep doing them without all of your support and coming on. We can, couldn't get uh, great guests like Marcy on without all of our continued educator support. So I really can't thank all of you enough. And Marcy, again, I can't thank you enough for joining today. Uh, so if you're looking to purchase or add to your Makerspace STEM lab, supplement your curriculum in any way, uh, Maker Maven is here to help you out. There's a lot of different ways to contact us. You can contact us directly by going to our website and filling out a custom form. You can email us at orders at makermaven.net, or you can call us on our toll-free number, which is 877-MAKER75, or 877-625-3775. Uh, 
um, and we're able to help you uh, build and grow your STEM abilities, um, basically custom to whatever you're looking to do in the future. Um, we also are very active on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, also with our new YouTube channel, all of these recorded webinars are gonna be hosted on our YouTube channel. So um, if you don't already like and subscribe to uh, our YouTube, I highly suggest you do that because if there is a webinar that you've missed in the past or one that you can't see in the future, you can always see the recording of those webinars the very next day after the live recording. Um, with that being said, we do have a, our next webinar coming up in two weeks. Um, I believe it is on March 4th with Kai's Clan. So Kai's Clan did do a great webinar with us back in uh, the fall of 2020. And they have some new exciting ways and some new things that they wanna show off for all of you. So uh, please go ahead and register for that new one. There's gonna be a lot of great information. We're gonna be doing some more fun giveaways. And uh, remember that we do send out um, certificates for one hour of professional development to turn in for your um, advancing learning um, or whatever it's called in your area to uh, get those professional development credits for you as well. So that email will be going out with your certificate in the morning. All right, with that being said, I really don't have anything else today. Um, so thank you everybody. Thank you, Marcy. Um, I still see there's a lot going on in the chat. So if any other questions, I don't mind hanging out here for a few extra minutes and uh, answering some of your questions. And Marcy's still with us. So if you have any questions for her, uh, go ahead and pop them in the chat. All right, definitely try and stay warm. <laughs>